And up first is Amy Marshall, the director of the Craig Public Library, with If They Build It, They Will Keep Coming Back. So Amy, go ahead and take it away. Hi, this is Amy from Craig. Um, Muted. Like you said, this is going to be very quick. I put a lot of information on the slides. If you have any questions, my contact information is at the end. Um, for some reason, my computer is still trying to uh, do a slideshow quicker than I could talk. Um, a quick introduction to the Craig Public Library. We have a service population of 1,200 with 3,780 active patrons. So we also serve the greater Prince of Wales Island. We also have a lot of uh, transient folks who come through, get temporary cards. Some of them keep them, some of them don't. We try to go through and make sure that we, that we have active patrons as active patrons. A very small staff, we have 1.5. I have a part-time person and me. We have 14 volunteers in 1,600 square feet. 1,200 of that you can use for the public. The rest of it's taken up with bathrooms and vestibules and stuff like that. To give you an idea of how remote we are, Prince of Wales Island is 750 air miles from Seattle and 1,000 from Anchorage. And what I learned at ARSL is that people look at remote remoteness as in, how far are you from Walmart? Well, to go to Walmart, we have to drive an hour, get on a ferry for three hours, get to catch a can, go to Walmart, get back on the ferry for three hours, and drive an hour home. So this is, this is pretty much how, how remote we are, <laughs> just as a, as a for instance. And uh, for Team Tech Week 2014, we got a Yalsa Best Buy grant. And what this was, we were going to build a 3D printer. So uh, a friend of mine had built an, an Airwolf 3D printer, and I said, how hard is this? He said, you can do it. And I said, you realize I'm not techie? And he said, you can still do this. So what we did was we ended up with the grant, thank you, Yalsa, and Best Buy. And we did some fundraising because it was going to be a little more than we got for the grant. And the idea was, is that over Teen Tech Week, the teens were going to assemble this thing, and then we have an annual Pi Einstein Day celebration on the 14th of March, 3.4. Hello? 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 And this is the, this year is going to be the, the ultimate Pi Einstein Day. Hello? Um, so, fueled by pizza, the teens met at the library with several adult volunteers, and the build was on. And uh, that lower picture, over the next few days, we saw a lot of this, which is people bending over instructions going, wow, this may be a little more difficult than we thought it was. And then we had a snag two days in. Now, remember, we're remote. And two-day UPS, um, let's see, I'm waiting for a package. It'll be seven days today, and it's still not there. So we hit a snag, and it looked like we weren't going to get the build done on time. One of the bearing rods began shedding bearings, so we called Airwolf, and they did the impossible. They actually got us a replacement parts in fewer than 48 hours. Um, if you're doing something like this, I can really uh, recommend Twitter, <laughs> um, social media, get on there. You know, We gave Airwolf a lot of love. We gave Yelso a lot of love. Uh, through our tweets and you know pictures, and you know we we were doing a lot of um, that type of things. We got back on track, and by Wednesday we thought we just might pull this off. And then on Friday it was Pi Einstein Day. We had 70 people in the library. Now, strangely enough, our local NPR KRBD had just run a story about 3D printing prostheses earlier that morning, and so. I think that's why we had so many people at the library that day. What I didn't tell anybody at the library is that the kids, the teens and the kids had not tested this printer. And we didn't know if it was going to work. We had uh, Airwolf on the line. We had uh, 3D, enthusi 3D printing enthusiasts from the United States and from Canada you know, hanging out with us on Facebook, waiting to see if this would happen, and also there to help us if something went terribly wrong and we could troubleshoot it. And the reason that we did this is for this next slide. This was our success. Our first print was a customized circle from Thingiverse, and it says Craig Public Library, and what you can't see on the bottom because it's while it's printing, was March 14, 2014. I'm going to send you the YouTube link. This is the raw video of the demonstration. And this is why it was great, because the kids' and the teens' reaction was awesome. It's, it's absolutely hilarious to watch this video. I will, I will highly recommend it. 
Um, if you're doing something like a 3D printer, early success is important because they can be incredibly frustrating to work with at the beginning. It's essential to keep them coming back. It's, it's essential to give them a success. Um, it was a friend of mine in Canada who suggested Thingiverse. It's a good site. You can customize the, 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 the uh, files are called STLs. They can customize them and then they can print them. And at the time, if you remember 2014, this is when somebody went off and, and trademarked or copyrighted, I think it was trademarked, the symbol for pi. And we couldn't use that as a result because uh, Thingiverse and ThinkGeek and all those folks had pulled everything with the pi symbol off of their websites. So now what? So when pi came back. We use uh, MatterHacker and uh, Thingiverse, well Thingiverse to tweak the designs and then MatterHacker to figure out the commands, how they're processed and, and the next steps and then getting it right was half the fun. And you can see in the lower right, if you know anything about 3D printers, we still didn't have it right. <laughs> um, some of our younger patrons continue to use programs like Thingiverse and CookieCaster and I included the link for CookieCaster because it is a whole lot of fun. Uh, this particular cookie cutter, this was our first one. It was designed by a nine-year-old boy who is solidly on the autism spectrum. It was an absolute thrill to watch him complete this. And then I got a, a Facebook post from his mom because they made Pokemon pizzas with it. So that was just an absolute wonderful thing that came out of this. And then we had the ones who decided that they were going to use SketchUp and 123Design. Uh, this young man uh, designed and printed. It's a glider. You know, it's a shootable glider. It actually worked. It's absolutely incredible. But this is the type of things that, that the, the teens didn't realize when they did the printer, when they built the printer, that, oh, well, now we have to learn the software. So once they had those successes with Thingiverse and other things, then they said, oh, well, we really want to learn the software. So this is the first 3D printer available for patron use in Alaska. There are others now. This is kind of the breakdown of our budget. Uh, yes, I did spend $125 on pizza. Pizza here is very expensive. <laughs> um, since that, and since the, the teen saw, well, hey, the library did something, and it actually worked, and we want to come back and do more things, we did a Lego rocket design uh, contest, Fly Me Beyond the Moon, that was to celebrate the Orion EFT-1. You know, let's get to Mars, as you know, Buzz Aldrin says it better. But um, this, we also uh, have a program with the Sally Ride EarthCam aboard the International Space Station. We've uh, started a Lego Mindstorms robotics program, and the kids are programming different robots to do different things. And then we have been doing Minecraft EDU, and the thing that's amazing about that is that the kids are actually hacking the game, and they're being the game changers and the creators. And that is with coding and different things that they just keep coming back because things at the library, they see it, that they're working. This is our Team Tech Week uh, project this year. We've partnered with the U.S. Forest Service and with uh, the beach cleanup folks, we're going to, we've got drones and GoPros and we're going to be creating video conference content using El Capitan Cave on Prince of Wales Island for school groups and for interested parties all over the world. We're also going to be going out on Whale Fest and documenting tsunami debris and I see I'm at 9.10 so I will stop with that. And real quick, here's my contact information. Right. Yes, thank you. <laughs> we lost track of our mouse in here. Okay, our one question for you before we move on to our next presenter is, are you charging for printing by the public, and if so, how much? No, I'm not, I'm not charging at this point because we are still on our, our original spool of uh, ABS. Great. So we figured that would be the ABS that everybody get to use. All right, sounds wonderful. Well, thank you very much, and that's great. And, uh, yeah, we've got a 3D printer here I'm still working on setting up, so uh, <laughs> you've inspired me. <laughs> <laughs>